In this exercise, we're going to set up the ATV12 in 3-wire control mode using the most basic parameters in the Quick Start Guide. In Section 4, we will be carrying out more advanced VFD control functions. So I have the uh, Getting Started Guide with ATV12 open. And I'm going to scroll down. And we are familiar with all of the power connections. We've spent a bit of time with that. So I will just pass over those. And if you look on the page on the right hand side of the screen, under Section 5, Connect Control Wiring and select Control Configuration. There are a few diagrams there. Um, there's the, the first one under 5.1, Wire the Speed Reference. So we're going to wire a potentiometer. Right below that, it shows Wire the Command, and it's showing a diagram for two-wire control. We are going to use the diagram below that. We are going to use Control Command 3-wire. And we're going to set a parameter so that the drive will operate in three wire control mode. Now, if you look at where my mouse is, you'll notice that there's, there's three points of reference. It's the stop button, the forward button, and the reverse. And the reverse has an address of logic input X. We can assign that reverse button to any one of the remaining inputs that's not used after LI1 and LI2. I am going to draw that out for you and it will make sense when we program it. So we'll, we'll, we'll redraw it in an EMA diagram. These diagrams that you're looking at in this quick start guide are IEC. And once we have it drawn, we'll wire it and then we will set these motor parameters. We'll set the motor parameters, the basic parameters, the control choice and we'll test it. Okay, let's get started with the drawing. So now we're going to draw our control circuit. We have the power connections already connected. We're familiar with those. We have a 120 volt source, circuit breaker, disconnect switch. We are only breaking one leg because of the neutral you do not have to break. You, we have our motor. These are the specifications for our motor that we are going to use to program it when we set it up. So our power wiring is done. We have a conduit or a shielded cable or a flex that's bonded at both ends as you can see. So we're going to connect our control devices. Now I wanted to save a bit of time so I have our devices down here where where my mouse is circling. You can see um, I'm going to bring in a potentiometer we're going to be using that potentiometer also. And this program is called SkyCAD. It's, this is a free version and I will provide you with this template if you want to redraw it or modify it for a system that you're working on. So we use these pilot devices, but I have them in already and I have them modified slightly and labeled to uh, suit our diagram. So the first thing we'll do is we'll connect our speed reference, which is our potentiometer in this case. So I'm going to get a control connection wiring mode going here and I'm going to connect from the plus 5 volts up to the common and I'm going to take the potentiometer and drop it onto that wire so we have a fixed resistance connected between the common and the 5 volts and this connection right here, pin number two, is called the wiper. And what the wiper does is it divides the voltage between those two terminals. So in one extreme position it'll be zero and the other it'll be five and the drive uses that as a speed reference. And that that will be operated by uh, somebody like a, an operator or it could be operated automatically in some sort of a string pot or rotational device. Now, I'm going to take plus 24 volts. We are using source wiring, so it takes a positive signal to activate an input. And I'm going to connect over to logic input 1. I'm off a little bit on that. Sometimes it's hard to line it up on the... On the uh, control point. So from LI2 to 
to here, LA3, to the plus 24. So we have plus 24 connected to all three logic inputs. We're going to take the stop button and we're going to put it on the wire or connect it in the wire that connects to LI1 as per the quick start diagram. The run forward we're going to place on LI2. I'm going to stagger these because the, it gets a little bit busy with the uh, labels and the descriptions. These red numbers are the line reference numbers. So it references the page and the line. So if you had 10 pages of schematics, you, uh, you'd you be able to find what page and line it's on by using the tag on the device. Now I'm just placing these buttons on here for a visual cue. If you're working on this type of equipment, all stop buttons, the contacts are normally closed typically and they are red. And the operator device is also red and the contact on a normally open button is typically green. Now it could, it, the contact will be green. The operator could be green, yellow, black, blue. It depends. It could be white. Depends on, uh, on the control. Now on our potentiometer, we need to place a shield. Now you'll see, I have a shield down here. I'm going to drag that shield up and place it on the wire. And it's going to be bonded to ground at the drive end because at the drive end we have a good solid ground. Now we know that it's continuous. Theoretically, it, it would encompass the, the wiper wire also. So I'll put it right here. So that's our shield. This wire here I can maybe move over just to clean it up. Or I could just redraw it. and snip this part just to clean it up. Okay, so we have a normally closed button on LI1, a normally open run forward button on LI2, and a normally open run reverse button on LI3. If this wire where my mouse is, if it becomes damaged, you will not be able to run the drive. If somebody holds that button down, you will not be able to run the drive. But we have to program it in that mode and that's what we're going to do next. Now I just want to spend a couple of minutes on the wiring. If I open the door to the drive, you'll notice that my conductors are all terminated using ferrules. I prefer ferrules. Now you can use just normal uh, bare conductors, but just make sure that you don't have any strands Everything's nice and neat and tidy and you torque all of your connections as per spec. I have a color coded cable connecting to my drive and I have a remote terminal strip and my uh, analog connection is right here and it's, and it's uh, contained within a shielded cable. Now inside the door for the drive there's a diagram, I'll just zoom in a little bit, of the connections. And it's great if you're troubleshooting and you can you need to measure for voltage on a terminal you have a reference point and it's showing two different types of wiring it's showing sink and source that's right down here and again we're using source wiring on this application which is typical for north america and europe you will see sync so you have to learn how both of them work in this case we need the plus 24 to activate an input now my conductors from the drive are terminated on this terminal strip where my screwdriver is and these are my device operator wires. So I'm going to connect the stop forward and reverse and the potentiometer to that terminal strip and then we'll set it up. So I'll show you the operator devices from the rear. stop that's our red contact this is our forward it's a green normally open green normally open for the reverse this device right here over on the right is our potentiometer it's a honeywell 10k 2 watts a heavy duty unit but they're not very expensive they're 10 15 bucks for a really good one 
If you want to buy a cheap one, you can get one cheaper than that. This is a binary coded switch and this is a selector switch. We'll be using this in the more advanced labs. Now over here, I have terminated on the terminal strip. Now the reason I use the terminal strip is because I do so many different configurations on this unit that it's better to have a terminal strip. If I strip a terminal, I can throw it away and replace it. So now I'm going to close it up and we'll set the parameters. Now that we have the drive wired, we're going to look at the quick start guide. Under motor parameters, we need to set the standard motor frequency, the rated motor power, the rated motor current, and below rated motor current, there is a heading for motor thermal current. Now we do not have to adjust that because that parameter will be the same as the rated motor current. But what it allows you to do is it allows you to set the motor thermal current, which protects the motor to a more precise value if you need to do that. So we can adjust that value if we know that we have a fixed load and the current doesn't change and it's less than the FLA, we can adjust it accordingly. Now, under basic parameters, we're going to set the acceleration, the deceleration, the low speed, high speed, and our control type. We're going to set it to three wire control. And then we'll test it. Now, once you get into more advanced functions, you're not going to be able to use the quick start guide. You have to go to a more advanced manual and they give you a reference right here. When you click on this document, it's going to take you to a page where you can download a manual. I think it's 120 or 130 pages. And if you really want to learn about drives, you need to look at these manuals. There's a lot of documentation in here and it has all live links. So if you're using it on a, on a computer, it's great. If I click on page 16 for wiring, it takes you to all of the information on, on wiring. Some really good solid information on how to wire these devices. Okay. So let's get programming. Now I have it wired. It's ready to program but I disconnected the stop button wire to logic input one because the factory default setting is for two wire control mode and it's actually receiving a run input on LI1 and we can't program it. So I'll reattach that once the programming is done. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to set up the basic parameters right in here. So we're going to go to the configuration menu so basically what I did was, is I pushed the center of the button and I scrolled the configuration menu. I'm going to push enter and the first parameter comes up. Uh, it's called base frequency and it's either going to be 50 hertz or 60 hertz. 50 hertz for IEC and 60 for NEMA. I'm going to set it to 60. And the next parameter down is your frequency reference. We're just going to leave that. Uh, the... Uh, the default is analog input one. So this, it'll look at this potentiometer for a speed reference. And let's go to the next one, acceleration, three seconds. We'll just change that to, we'll just make a change for the sake of making change, why not? I'll just change it to five seconds. Next one down is deceleration. Again, I'll just change it to five seconds. We'll save a little bit of energy ramping up and down. And go down to the next one, the LSP, so that's the low speed. I'll leave it at zero. Next one down, high speed. It's set to 60. We'll just leave it at that. We'll play with those next week, a little bit more advanced. Nominal motor power. I'm going to hit enter. Right now it's set at 0 0.5 or half horsepower. I have to change that to 0.3. We're a third horsepower motor. And the next one down is your nominal current for the motor and it's set to 1.9 that would be for your half horse i'm going to take that down our fla is 1.2 going to hit enter 
Now you could adjust that if you have a fixed application and, the, and it does not operate at full load and you know it only operates at say 0.9 or 1 amp, you could set it down to that so it's closer. I'm not going to adjust the thermal current because it's, it's going to be set by default to 1.2 and we won't be making any adjustments. We'll get into that in the more advanced programming. Now, we have not set it to three wire control. I have to go into the I.O. menu. So I'm going to scroll again if I hit enter and I scroll to, to the configuration menu and I need to find the full menu in that menu. <laughs> hit full, I'm going to scroll until I hit I.O., hit enter, and right off the top we have TCC or type of control. By default it's set to control. I'm going to set it to three wire control. I have to hold it for a couple of seconds and now it's set to three wire control. Now you would not be able to do that if you had that button connected. So I'm going to reconnect that button and we'll test it. Okay, so now we're ready to test. If I hit the forward button and let go, it runs. So that's our three wire control. Our potentiometer for our speed reference is right here. That noise that you're hearing is the switching frequency. We can adjust that. We'll be doing that in our advanced section. That's our speed control. To stop it, I have to push stop. If I hold my finger on that button, I cannot run it. So it's fail safe. Now, something that I discussed was that the quick start guide only provides for a very basic setup. And I wired this reverse button, but if I push it, it's not changing into reverse. It's not changing directions. It's not starting in reverse. So what I have to do is I have to go into that more complex setup manual and the reason that they don't have reverse enabled is a lot of these drives are used for pumps and fans and typically you don't use those um, in reverse you don't run a pump in reverse also it doesn't know which uh, logic input you're going to assign it to so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into the function menu so i again if i hit the center of the dial and if I scroll down to config and I need to go into the full menu, we're going to be doing this on a computer. It's going to be so much easier. So I'm looking for the full menu and I'm going to go down to what's called the function. So that's for setting up functions. And I'm looking, that's a second ramp function. I'm looking for reverse. So RRS, I'm going to hit enter. And right now, factory setting says no. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign it to a logic input. It's wired to LI3, logic input 3. So it's LI1, LI2, LI3. I'm going to hit enter by pressing the center and it's set. So now when I hit the reverse button, it operates in reverse. There you go. Okay, so that's some of the things that you run into when you're setting these up. Keep, be aware that not all functions are enabled or assigned to a digital or logic input. We need to tune that noise out of there. Adjust the switching frequency.